And now on to the main event. To the, to the man to the left of me, Chris Terzieski, he's the current Australian heavyweight champion and Australasian heavyweight champion. He did that in the same fight. Um, he, he was the guy who was um, probably best known for defeating the hardest nails, Paul Garner. Make no mistake and appreciate you coming down, girl. Paul Garner was a professional fighter. He was one of the greatest rugby league players in the country's head, but he was also a professional fighter. People say he's a rugby league player turned, foot, foot, turned boxer. He's a professional fighter and he proved himself as a professional fighter in the way that he conducted himself in the ring. I don't think there's been many guys that have been tougher and harder than Paul Gallon on the field or in the boxing ring. And for two, Chris Terbieski to, to defeat Paul Gallon, obviously you had the boxing pedigree, mate, but he's a very, very hard man. And the way you, you, you did that was, was an incredible performance. Hats off to you, hats off to girl for, for, for putting on a magic show. And you showed your class in that fight. So it's a very difficult opponent. When I started talking to, to Tyson Pedro and his father, John, about what fight they want to have. Let's get this, let's get this on the road. They chose Chris Terzieski, because Terzieski has the WBC number five ranking. He's the Australian heavyweight champion. And I said, are you sure you want to take this fight? You know, this is a very difficult fight. It's your first professional boxing fight. Tyson Pedro's had five amateur fights, five when I was an amateur. He's a, he was a New South Wales intermediate champion until he followed his dreams of going to the UFC and MMA. Had a 10 and five career in the UFC and built a bit of a cult following within that. And, 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 and handled himself in an incredibly, uh, you know, stylish fashion. Was a, was a guy who was 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 known as, a, as, a, as an all-action person, and I, I anticipate he's going to bring that to the boxing ring. But when he's talking about this fight, I said, man, this is a very difficult fight. Chris Terzieski is the real deal. He's no joke. He's the Australian champion. He's number five in the bridgeweight division. He's had a lot of experience. Compared to you, he's had a massive amount of experience. And he said to me, just get the fight on, man. I'll take care of business. And so for me, this bloke's showing an immense amount of courage. His father, John Pedro, is the, the pioneer of, of cage fighting in Australia. He's grown up, been you know, thrown around, headlocked, kicked, scratched, probably beaten, thrown over the fence, um, you know, thrown on the barbecue at times. And Tyson's grown up as hard as nails, and they have a great dynamic, a great relationship between the two. But this fight is a real deal, guys. Um, for, for me to put that on, to promote this in his first professional boxing bout, taking on a man in Chris Terzieski, it's a monumental challenge and I think it's testament to the fact that Tyson Pedro does not want to come and disrespect the sport of boxing by doing anything other than fighting the toughest challenges that he can face and this proves it. This is the real deal. I don't think you get a harder, tougher, more challenging fight for Tyson Pedro. So hats off and much respect to Tyson Pedro for making this fight happen, for challenging Chris Terzieski and hats off to Terzieski for accepting it because He's a bit of an unknown commodity at the moment. Tyson Petro, people are like, oh, what's going on? Terzieski's going to school Tyson Petro because he's got the pedigree. But people don't know Tyson Petro like the way we do. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give too much away to Chris Terzieski. He's a gentleman and he's an absolute legend and a uh, fantastic bloke, as is Tyson Petro. But I think when the bell goes, Australia's going to get a real action packed fight. They're going to see that this man isn't coming here to, to mess around, he's not coming here to take a free ride and get, a, get an easy ride in boxing. He's coming here to shake things up. And I think you're going to be seeing that on June the 12th. So for everyone here, I really appreciate support to Dave Costantini, Cost, Costantini, the event producer here. Thanks for putting on this show. And to Frankie from, uh, from, from uh, your high company. Um, I can't remember the name, but Frankie, you're an, absolute, you're an absolute gem, mate. Thank you very much. And thanks to the boys for setting this up. It looks mad. And again, to the guys at Stan, thank you very much for partnering with us. We really appreciate it. Angela Hyder for putting the show on, for getting the fights done as usual. My wingman and the matchmaker of this show has done an incredible job putting some incredible fights on. There's two more fights to be matched. And once we announce them, it's going to be very, very exciting. Um, so, yeah, again, guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks very much. I'm going to open the questions up now to ATCO. And again, I really appreciate your attendance and look forward to doing the talk. Thank you. Taking on a pretty audacious challenge here, as Danny's just outlined there, with the history of your two respective careers. What is it about this challenge that you're taking on that you wanted to approach it and challenge yourself with this in making your professional debut? Yeah, I think it wouldn't be worth me trying to pull the wool over the Australian boxing community and the boxing fans' eyes. So if I came out here and had an opponent that was maybe a walkover or anything, there wouldn't be any point in doing it. So I wanted to have a hard opponent. I, w I wasn't planning on taking any easy fights, but we expected that the whole way through the card, everyone to have good hard fights and, you know, uh, put on a show for the boxing community. Chris, we just heard Tyson talk about it. He didn't want to pull the wool over the boxing community's eyes, but you are an Australian champion. You have fought some of the hardest people in the ring. 
in number five in your division. Do you feel somewhat disrespected that Tyson is, sees he can step into the ring with you as his first professional fight? Um, first of all, I just want to say massive thank you to Stan Sport, obviously um, Green Promotions for getting me on this platform. Thanks to uh, Tyson for picking me, because um, like Danny said, he chose me out of a bunch I'm sure he could have chose from. Um, I don't know if it's so much disrespect. I think um, any, any fight's a challenge, you know, especially at this magnitude, but um, I'm just looking forward to represent boxing, you know, show the art of boxing and, and show the skills that I, can, that I know I can perform on a night. Tyson's obviously had a long and illustrious UFC career after a short amateur boxing career, but do you think in the way he's coming into pro boxing, is he biting off more than he can chew? Yeah, definitely. I think so. I think um, it's funny, you know, in Aussie sport, you look at a combat sports, UFC, I was always back in the Aussie. You know, Tyson, Volkanovski, obviously Robert Whittaker, all these guys, Bam Bam, all these guys where you never think they're going to cross over into our sport. You always jam them up, bigging them up, and thinking, oh, this, you know, you want to back them. But coming into my sport now, like, I've got goals and aspirations of my own. Like, I look at the likes of George Cambosis, you know, Jai Opatire, some he's someone I'm inspired by seeing what he's doing on the world stage and, and I'm this close to getting there now, I'm ranked number five in the world, this title that we're going to compete for is going to bring me to that level and that's what I'm aspiring to be, you know, I want to be mentioned along those names, your Tim Zoos and, and those sorts. It it's makes fine. it a lot harder path when you have a loss to a zero and zero boxer. Yeah, that's the kind of lead up we want into this fight, just hearing that, um, Tyson, what, what do you make of Someone saying they think you have bit off more than you can chew. I'm glad he thinks that. Uh, you know, it's the way that he feels about that. It's going to be very hard for him to come back from having a loss to me. So I'm excited that he thinks that I've been off more like that because I'm the underdog. So there's no pressure on me. It's a lose lose for him. If he loses to an MMA fighter, it doesn't look good on the record. Is there somewhat risk here, Chris, given? Um, he doesn't have a fight in his professional boxing career. For you, is there risk? Yeah, I suppose there's an element of risk, but you know, with great risk, there's great reward. Like I said, this is going to put me super high in the bridge weight rankings. You know, it's an opportunity for me to elevate my career against, you know, obviously Tyson's coming into boxing, but we're very similar in a sense of I think we've both had 15 fights in combat sports. You know, we're both sort of similar age, height, we're both fast and explosive. I think it's a, it's a good matchup in terms of you know, what we're going to deliver on the night. I just think um, it's very hard. Like, there's, a, there's having a fight and then there's having a boxing match. And there's a lot of nuances in boxing. You know, I just, <laughs> there's not a chance I'd step in and take Tyson on in an MMA fight in nine weeks. You know, I wouldn't have the time to prepare. And I think that's the difference. You, know, you can go in there and throw punches, but there's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. John, I want to throw it over to you. You've trained your son in combat sports virtually since he could walk. But as a father, how do you feel about your son taking on such a formidable opponent in his professional career to start it off? Good day, mate. Um, I'm just G'd up about this whole stand thing. See how I put all the sponsors in there? Um, it's exciting. It's exciting because, you know, you wake up in the morning and people want to climb Mount Everest. This is his Mount Everest. He looked over to me and goes, Dad, I want to go to the boxing. I said, oh. Ooh, that's, that's a hard one. But I've said the same answer I've always said. Let's go. Let's do it. That's his Mount Everest. He's going to get up there every morning, and he's going to punch the bag. He's going to do the road runs. He's going to do everything he has to do. That's a beast over there on the other side. And, uh, but Tyson's always loved it. You look at it. He had two fights in the UFC, and then they threw him off to fight all the top ten guys. So he loves challenges. He loves fighting. He lives with this stuff, so yeah, as a father, well, first coach, you're like, get in there and fuck him up. But as a dad, you're like, hey son, can you play Batman or maybe chess to give my heart a little break? But other than that, I'm with him. We're gonna be up every morning. We're gonna be doing three, four training sessions. He's gonna be given 150%. So when we get in there, I think we'll make the people proud. That's what the Aussie's always done. Have a gold mine. Have oh, a gas for the swearing. That has a big media change. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I don't sorry. even know how I ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> they just told me, come up here. So I went, fuck it. This is it. <laughs>
Well, we're glad you're up here, mate. You can be a promoter as well as a trainer, Johnny. Thank you. Um, Chris, just heard John describe you as a beast. Now, as we know, it's been said already, you dominated hard as nails man in the front row, Paul Gallen, the Australian heavyweight title. Very few athletes in rugby league and boxing can say they dominated that very tough warrior, that competitor down there. You can say you did that. So do you think this fight's going to be easier than taking on Gal? Um, I think it's definitely going to pose different challenges. Gal, the fight with Gal was definitely the hardest fight I've ever had. You know, the testament to his heart, his fortitude, his toughness, his ability to keep going. Like it definitely, it helped me grow. It was the best learning fight for me in a development fight as a fighter, to be in deep waters, to go 10 rounds, to feel that experience. Um, it's only going to serve me so good in this fight. So, you know, I appreciate Gal. He gave me a mad opportunity at the time, just like I appreciate Tyson. Like, it's going to be cool, you know. I was lucky enough to get a good win over against the NRL superstar, and now hopefully I can get a good win over a UFC superstar. So, my resume won't be looking too bad after that, I feel. Like, again, like being on this stage, like Danny said, it's for fighters. We're coming up, we're on small shows, like, you know, there's only a select few that get a really, really good push, so I'm just so blessed, man. Like, that was a, I'm pretty sure me and Gal, um, we almost sold, it was the third most highest pay-per-views for that year. The only ones that beat us was uh, Haney and Cambosa, so that was more of a credit to Gal um, pushing the show, but, you know, to get those type of eyeballs, and then again, like, we've got Stan Sport, pay-per-view, like, again, I'm just so, so grateful for this opportunity, and that's why... I'll be training hard and, and killing myself for nine weeks, you know, taking myself to some dark places because ultimately, you know, this is the biggest stage and this is where I want to shine. We'll go down to water and watch Uncaged pay-per-view. Customers will need an active stand subscription. Stand subscribers can order the pay-per-view at stand.com.au forward slash pay-per-view from tomorrow. So you don't have to wait long to get yourself the pay-per-view for this one. Tyson Pedro, Chris Terzievsky, of course, bring the team promotions.